Hello there and thank you for watching. My name is Christiana and my channel is The Well-Behaved Wallet where I talk about mindset, motivation, and making or saving money. Today is July 4th, which is American Independence Day and it is one of my favorite holidays for a couple of different reasons. So today's video is going to be all about the idea of independence and freedom and specifically what that means to me and why I love this holiday so much. So to kind of begin, um, July 4th, I'll kind of give you my history, then I'll tell you how that applies to my life specifically today. July 4th had just kind of been one of those summer holidays I didn't really pay attention to. Growing up, it was just it kind of like passed along the years. It was one of those, you know, it didn't really stand out as anything specific. Um, I don't know, my first memory, we, we never did anything special as a family. Um, I think our town did, our town does fireworks, like nothing remarkable at all. Um, I think one year I went as part of a choir to our, um, like our towns, um, like unveiling, we were unveiling something and we sang as a choir, but that was the only kind of memorable thing. I don't even think it was the fourth, it might've been Memorial Day or Labor Day, I'm not really sure. Um, so the fourth wasn't anything special spectacular until I moved to Korea to teach um, abroad for two years. I worked there for two and a half years. And this is the first time that American Independence Day, July 4th, became significant to me. So I moved to Korea in March and I kind of had a rocky start because I was leaving everything. I didn't know anyone where I was going. And it was the first time that I had been on my own in a different country and I would stay there for a full year. So the way the visa works and the flights, you book your ticket over there and then you're just, that's where you are. The school that sponsors you is a school that um, you have to stay at and you work at. And my contract was set up that I, I didn't go home. So from March of one year to the Mar March of the next year, I would be there and I would be there for the full year. So I knew this going into it. I did not anticipate the effect that, uh, like the social effect, because the work was, was I'd never had it so easy before in my life. Um, and I had a lot of free time, so I had a lot of time to explore other interests. The most difficult, so I played a lot of viola in my apartment, let me just say. <laughs> the most difficult part was the social aspect, and it was fitting in with other foreigners, because the school that I was at, that I was at attracted a certain type of person, and I didn't really mesh so well with that type of person. I was very driven and motivated and I was someone that liked to do things and to go places and to affect things. And they were kind of more of a chill group um, for sure. So the school that I was at was in Daegu, which is a suburb of, it's a southern suburb of Korea, um, about two and a half hours south of Seoul. And the school that I was at was way out in, in the country. It was about a, a 20 minute taxi ride um, from the nearest town center. So I was a little bit isolated, not super bad, because um, it was super easy to get like a bus or something, but I had to figure all that out. Um, and so for me, being on my own in a foreign country where I didn't speak the language, my dad is Korean, but I do not speak the language, um, was really, really um, jarring. And then to be with these people where I felt like I didn't fit in, they made very clear that they were not into the kind of things that I was into, and I was like, okay, fair. <laughs> So I really struggled to find my groove and to, to um, find my place where I fit in. Um, being an American, there were a couple Canadian, they, they were mostly Canadian, actually, I think the entire school. There were six foreigners and they were all couples and um, they were all Canadian. So for me, and I know that it was really my own, the way that I reached out to them was very forward and very forthright and they were kind of more of a laid back chill group. So really a lot of that was on me. Um, and if I had it to do over, I would have made many adjustments. Um, but so here I was. So from March, April, May, um, to June, <laughs> so spring into summer got really challenging because I felt like I was all on my own. I felt like I was going to die. Like I just literally, and at some point, cause I had food allergies and I had some like interactions with, um, with some of the food it wasn't the easiest. So at one point I actually did end up going into anaphylactic shock. It was not fun. So to have that, the health concerns compounded by the social sort of, um, dynamic was not exciting. So we get into June and I'm feeling like, what the heck have I done? I've made the worst mistake of my life. I'm not going to be able to do this. I just want to come home. I knew that wasn't an option, but it was something I very much wanted to do. So what I did was kind of what I'd always been trained to do, which is to take action, to get information, to not sit still. So I would force myself to get up and go out. Um, I'm an introvert by nature, but I am someone that, that solves problems. So <laughs> I'm like looking for a solution using that sort of forward nature to be like, all right, there's some, there's somewhere out there for me. And I knew it. So I immediately searched for a church to connect with. So that was the first place where I formed connections. Um, 
and the church that I settled at was an international church near an army base. So there were a lot of um, servicemen. The pastor was actually bivocational. He had a full-time 40-hour-a-week-plus job on the base, and then there was, and he also was pastor of this church full-time. He did not take a salary from the church. So that was really an incredible, incredible communion, uh, community of people that were both from the base and local, um, Korean people, <laughs> Koreans in Korea. Um, so it was a, a neat kind of mish, uh, mish, me, mesh of, of individuals and personalities, and everyone has their motivation. I was going there to not be alone. Um, there are people that would send their kids there to learn English, and I'm like, fair. Like that, you, everyone has their motivations. Um, but this communi community was really, really incredible. Um, and that was where I ended up forming the base for my social life and, and everything else that really came out of that. That was the first place that I learned to really take my strength and my sustenance and my substance from that meeting, um, that church group. So um, it's, it's June. So fast forward to July um, when I really started to get involved and the church really started to do, they had like, a, because of being an American army base, um, they had festivities for the fourth. So it was the first time I thought in my head, like, oh, there, Korea was doing nothing because I mean, it meant nothing to Korea, obviously. It's not a Korean holiday. Um, but it was very uniquely American. And it was something that when I saw that they were doing something for the fourth, I was like, oh, it's fourth of July. Like, oh, it just, it made me feel like a little tiny slice of home. I'm like, I am an American. And that is the first time that I really, uh, for better or for worse, because I know there are tons of negative connotations associated with being an American. These are obvious. Um, they're insensitive. They have no no cultural sort of understanding or, or uh, sense of manners. However, I can't, I mean, the whole mindset to me, what it means to be an American is that you, it, it, I associate being American for me, the, the best parts of it with grit and determination and um, freedom and the ability to pursue what you know you, you have within you to pursue. And doing that with the idea that there's a better life, forging a better life. That's what it means. <laughs> That's what being an American means to me. Um, and the freedom to pursue that path. Um, freedom and support and infrastructure to pursue that path, really. So being in Korea really gave me an appreciation for those qualities that make me uniquely American and those things that I feel like I have received from the country that I, I happened to be fortunate to be born in. Fortunate enough to be born in. So I remember on the 4th of July, because they, they had, um, th this church had celebrations the weekend um, before. So on the 4th, I think it, it happened to fall on a Saturday. And I was like, what am I going to do? I want to do something to celebrate. So I ended up going to one of the um, department stores, because department stores in Korea have everything. They have, it, it, like, there was a food court in this department store, and there happened to be a subway, and it was like a shining, like, beacon. Because McDonald's is fairly common, but something about it, like, they make it different and it just didn't taste right it was it was fine it was one of the few things that I could eat because of the allergies I could read the ingredients and knew what was in it um subway was was also like that so I went to this department store I got myself a subway veggie footlong sandwich I went home and I watched the movie 1776 the musical with William Daniels from Boy Meets World which is one of my favorite musicals please don't judge um I still to this day love that musical um that's a, kind of another story um uh, my friend and I got really obsessed with that after seeing it in um in seventh grade and there was a violin and I happened to play violin and my friend would be like see if you can play this and see if you can make it do this I'm like, okay so I just love that musical and I really especially love the relationship between John Adams and his wife Abigail Adams and the letters that they used to write back and forth um those are very well known and as a matter of fact when I was in Korea I had sort of a longing for this um movie so I bought the biography <laughs> the David McCullough biography of John Adams um, and I just love it because it kind of details the, um, the resilience of their relationship through, I mean, they were, they were apart more than they were together. Um, but their letters are so rich and so filled with, um, with hope and determination, really the things that I, I feel like the country was founded on. So that's really one of the reasons why I love this holiday. And it, it's kind of a yearly reminder to me to appreciate, um, the things that we have here in this in, in America and not take them for granted and to uh, also at the same time work to dispel those negative stereotypes of the cultural insensitivity and um, just being obnoxious and being brash and being um, selfish and, and just inappropriate. So really it's kind of twofold to be um, 
to appreciate and to to be a positive reflection of the country that that I come from. Um, so that's why I love the holiday, and that's why for me it serves as a yearly reminder to appreciate independence. How does this affect my life currently? So here's how. Uh, and in the last video that I, um, one of my budget videos, I got some really positive feedback on the line about freedom fighters, recruiting your dollars to be freedom fighters for you. And I love that line. It is not my line. It is from this book, The Millionaire Fast Lane, that I'm reading by MJ DeMarco. And this book, I, I'm loving this. The title is not great because it sounds like, it sounds, and he, he also says this, MJ DeMarco, I was listening to an interview with him. He says it, it does sound like a get rich quick scheme, which it, it, he kind of does promote get rich quick, not get rich easy. So I'm really enjoying this, his perspective because it's, it's not entirely at odds with the Dave Ramsey perspective. And I think he puts himself in a niche that, that play, that positions himself as being opposite to Dave Ramsey, because obviously he wants to take a new, um, a new perspective, but um, to cover a new corner of the market, they're not entirely opposed. He too extols the virtues of saving, um, because, and the idea that you're recruiting your dollars to be freedom fighters for you. I love that line. And that's kind of my, um, my new sort of, uh, mentality going forward. Every dollar is a freedom fighter. And before you let it go, you really think about where is it going? So for example, today I went out to dinner with, um, some friends from, call them friends, from my orchestra. They are, I, I love these people. Um, and it came around to like, who's going to pay. And I know that one friend is in sort of reduced circumstances at the moment. It's really difficult. She's got four kids. Um, and a, a great husband who's kind of in a, in a bit of a, a trough at the moment. Um, so I was like, let me, let me cover her portion. And absolutely. I think that people come before money every time, every time. Um, that said, you know, what, what doesn't come before money is uh, come before what comes last is me needing to wanting to buy a new dress that comes last. So being very, very strategic about where you're spending your money. And I will always say, spend your money on people before things. So the idea of declaring independence for me is taking a new perspective to how I'm going to build wealth and my strategy, still saving, still working to eliminate debt, eliminate debt. Um, also the idea that freedom is possible. It is possible to be completely free, meaning to get to a point where your time is no longer, your money is no longer tied to your time. That's the ultimate freedom for me. If I, my goal is to divorce my time from money and I know that's possible. And that is my new mission. Slowly, but surely we'll get there. And I just, I feel this holiday is a wonderful new time to sort of reaffirm my commitment to that type of freedom and that type of independence and to just enjoy the idea of that and to know that every single day with that, that mission in mind, with that goal and that strategy in mind, each day brings me closer to it. And I'm like, just take one action, just take three small actions a day to do something to move yourself closer to that goal. So that is how the idea of independence and freedom is impacted. It affects my life today currently. And that's what I'm currently working toward. And that's why Independence Day is my favorite holiday. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I will reference the video, the budget video that I did down below. Um, something else that's really helping lately has been the the 75 Hard program that I'm doing, um, started by Andy Frisella. I did a video on that as well, and I will leave that down below because I'm having to read 10 pages of a nonfiction book a day, which is fantastic, which is 10 more pages. I'm on day six, day seven now. That's 70 more pages than I read in the past three months. Sorry to say, actually not, because I've skimmed here and there, but I'm like making a, a commitment to it. That's my place. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. So this is fantastic. And I'm really feeling like I'm getting a lot of traction through doing this program. I'll link that video as well. Um, and so that's where I am. As always, again, I, I thank you for watching. And I hope, as always, that you will keep watching. And I wish you a happy Independence Day wherever you are. Bye.